What's up, everybody? I'm Dr. Luigi, and I'm back with the complete Railcraft tutorial for Railcraft version 9.12.2.0. Now, the 9.12 is really the only part you have to worry about. The .2 is just bug fixes, and this is in 1.7.10. So finally, we get to part three: trains. Railcraft adds locomotives, cargo trains, as well as a myriad of special carts. So we'll just go ahead and start with the locomotives. Now, Railcraft has four locomotives, the Steam, Electric, Perpetuum, and the Tunnel Board. The Tunnel Board is really neat, so we'll do that one last. So let's get all this stuff and get started. So first, we have the Steam Locomotive. Now, if you watched the last episode uh, where we worked on the, where we went over the boilers, then this will be very familiar. You have water which is stored in this and can be input via buckets or just by right clicking so let's go and fill that up and it holds six buckets of water which isn't all that much and then there's an area for solid fuel as well as three excess slots that will be put into the main firebox and a temperature gauge as well as a steam bar and steam as you can see was can hold 16 buckets the locomotive has three modes, shutdown, which completely turns it off, idle, which uses a little bit of fuel and keeps the boiler warm but it won't run, and running, which actually makes the locomotive move while using steam. Now when you're in running, there are four modes, I mean there are five modes. There are, there's forward with four different speeds and backwards. So let's go ahead and throw in a refined firestone, now this really, uh, this really works. This works really well for the steam locomotive as it'll warm up really quick. So let's go ahead and put it into idle, and as you can see, it gets up to temperature almost instantly. That's amazing. If you use cold coke, it takes a lot longer. So I definitely recommend using a firestone if you can. However, it does burn quickly, and you'll see that it takes out. It will take out the durability over time. So. Let's go ahead and set it to running, and you'll see that it starts just taking off. Now that, of course, is full speed, so let's go ahead and slow it down. That's the three times the speed, or level three. Ah, got away from me. All right, there's level two, and there's level one, just putting. And then reverse. Now it lets off some cool smoke particles out of the smokestack and some steam particles. So it's pretty neat. Next is the electric locomotive, which runs off of electricity. And we'll talk more about electricity in, later on in this video and in the tracks video. So this has an internal battery and it has running and shutdown, just like the steam locomotive, just no idle and the same speeds. Now, in this, both the steam and the electric locomotive, there is this little lock which will allow you to lock. It will only accept tickets through here, which we'll talk about in the routing episode, if this is locked from the owner. And then if you do the little plus, then only you, the owner, can get into the, in the GUI and actually do anything. So that's pretty neat. And of course, this is the same with the electric locomotive. Lock means it will peep, other people can still get into this GUI, but it won't accept tickets, which again we'll talk about in the routing episode. Or you can have the little plus, which means it's completely private. Only you or an OP can get into this GUI. Last is the per I mean, second to last, the last of the main locomotives is the perpetual locomotive, which uses no fuel. And of course, this has the same three lock system and the same speeds. And this is in creative only. However, you can get it if you have a, a continuum orb if you play this mod pack. Now, what's really neat are the craft abilities with these. That you, you, there's a lot more than just a plain old train that you can do here. So let's go ahead and grab some dyes because you can change the color. So let's get some pink and black. So you see that it will say the primary color is light gray and the secondary color is gray. So by putting the secondary color on the bottom and the primary color on top, 
we can actually change those. So now we have a black and pink locomotive. The primary color is the black and the secondary color is the pink. And then we'll do the same with the electric locomotive, just swapping them. Now I'm, the, you can also do this with the creative one. However, I'm, I can't really tell you if that matters because you can't get the creative one unless you're lucky with the continuum orb or on creative. So that's pretty neat. And remember last time we talked about this emblem. So that's also pretty neat as well. So if you take the train and you craft it with an emblem, you'll see that now it'll say the emblem of Stone Age Miner. And if we put this down, see the little emblem right there. And if you do the same thing with an electric locomotive, the emblem will appear right there. So that's pretty neat for customization. Now for the tunnel bore. Now the tunnel bore is a little more complex, so we'll go ahead and head to an external tunnel that I made already, because this won't work in that spawn area because it makes a tunnel. So let's go ahead and plop that down. Now, as you can see, it's quite big, so I'm just going to go ahead and have some night vision so that it's a little easier to see. So the tunnel bore accepts has this complex GUI and it will accept fuel, ballast, and track. So let's go ahead and get some track and we'll put that in there. Now the bore head comes in three varieties, iron, steel, and diamond, and they are crafted by surrounding a block of the said material in steel. Diamond, of course, is the best and will last the longest because these do break. So we'll slap a diamond on there. As you see, it has this neat little model on there. So if you change the material, it'll change the color. So we'll stick with diamond. Ballast is gravel or crushed obsidian. Most people just use gravel because it's cheaper. I'll show you what that does once we fire it up. And then fuel, which once again, we'll use a firestone for. So as you can see, this thing just chugs right along, it places track, and it creates a tunnel. And it creates a 3x3 three three tunnel, and it fills the whole thing. So let's go ahead and get a side view here. As you can see, it'll just sit there and mine. Now, if we were to make a cavern, because those do appear in ravines, then we'll see something different. We'll see the tunnel bore traverse that in a pretty nice way, as long as I don't break it. So let's go ahead and throw all this in there. Now, right now, it's just kind of spitting the stuff on the ground. Now, there is a good solution to that, which I'll talk about when we in a little bit. Oh no, it's going to fall off the edge. Ah, the tunnel bore is smarter than that. It puts down gravel to make its own bridge. So, we'll just go and get a world anchor. And let this do its thing. We'll be back to there in a moment. Alright, so we got the locomotives out of the way. Next are the carts. Actually, there's one more thing with the locomotive. You see that I have this whistle tuner. Now these locomotives, when they're running, will randomly make a little whistle sound. Let me go ahead and fill, fill this up so you can see. There we go. So you see it makes a little whistle sound. Now, let's say you don't like that sound. So if we were to pick this, it says whistle pitch is 1.23. Well, let's go ahead and change that. You see that now it's a little lower, and the whistle pitch is still 1.23. Hmm. Weird. 
but you can just right click this there we go that's a little more ear bleeding hmm. so yeah that's how you can change the whistle and of course you could do that with the electric locomotive as well although that's more of a sound alright as we have an audience now alright so let's get into these carts you have a mine cart which of course you should be very familiar with however the reason I bring this up is these now stack up to three now I said we we're gonna use the crowbar in this episode and there are a few things that it can do one it can flip this around and then if you right click you can actually thwack this and make it move makes it easier to transport and if I shift and right click oh, come on ass alright so if I shift and right click you can see that I created a link so we'll go ahead and do that with the chest card as well and so you just shift and right click on two carts and it'll make a nice little link go ahead, get him out of there so see now it's chugging along making a nice little train right. oh. go ahead and make this one private punched his thing. Come on. It's frustrating. Alright, there we go. Sweet. So now, we got a little train. So we'll go ahead and make this idle. Now, Railcraft adds two new types of car storage carts. One is the cargo cart. More people are getting on. That's cool. Alright, so now we have the cargo cart and you see that this has a filter now this acts a lot like a chest cart but it'll only hold one item so you see this I have it filtered to hold grass and it won't hold cobblestone so it makes a nice little model on there the, the more items it's holding and just like all the other stuff you can link this up as well next is the tank cart so we'll go ahead and add that one to our train and the tank cart holds liquids and you can just right click on it like that or you can open the inventory and put the buckets in like that just like the just like the cargo cart you can put a filter in here and you see it'll make a nice little logo on the side and now this will only hold water even once it's empty so we'll go ahead and start up our choo choo again and you'll notice it just pulls all the carts right along so that's pretty cool so I'll go ahead and stop this and we'll talk about the other carts the cargo cart by the way can only be used with a filter you can't just haphazardly put stuff in there let me you can't just put random stuff in there you have to have a filter in order to put anything in there so just a quick note all right, so we'll go ahead and drop off some of this stuff that we don't need. Next are these wooden carts. Now these are pretty interesting in the fact that they are the only wooden carts. So for these, we're going to need a special priming track, which just ignites these carts. We'll talk more about the priming track in the track episode, which is over there. The wooden TNT cart acts the same as an iron TNT cart that's included in vanilla, but it's crafted with wood, so it's a little cheaper. So if we put that down and we right click, once it goes over the priming track, it'll explode. Now normally it would destroy the terrain, however we are in a protected area, that's why I had to do the tunnel bore out there. The pumpkin cart can only be crafted near Halloween. And those, that, when it explodes, it drops a random item. Which is pretty neat. So we're going to grab that. And then the gift cart can only be crafted around the holidays. And you see, he has a crowbar. He's, he's into railcraft. And when this explodes, it drops a random item as well. So let's go ahead and set off a few of these. Oop. See that one dropped some snowballs and a potion. That one dropped a coal. So the items that they drop are completely random. 
So there, it's a nice little thing to do on the holidays. Now we're gonna get to the energy cards. So we're gonna need these uh, when we're talking with the electric locomotive, as I was talking about. So let's go ahead and put down electric locomotive. Now, if you these are only available, these three are only available when you have industrial craft installed, and they're basically a bat box, an MFE, or a CSEU when they're sitting in a minecart. So if I open this, it has the exact same uh, GUI as a bat box. So let's go ahead and get a bat box for comparison. As you can see it looks exactly the same, and it has the exact same GUI. Unfortunately, this does not have the armor slot or the redstone because it wouldn't make sense for it to have a redstone. So let's go ahead and charge this up with a energy crystal from industrial craft all right so we're going to charge this one up all right it doesn't work with the energy crystal mostly because it's too high of a tier so we'll let's go ahead and go to the MFE cart now these carts are heavy, so you'll see that when I activate this, it'll be pretty slow. So let's go ahead and load this up with an energy crystal. So you can see that the energy is transferred to the electric locomotive, but it is super slow because this thing is heavy, even though it's on full speed. We go ahead and private this. So let's go ahead and destroy this train. Get it out of the way. And we're gonna need some more power. So let's go ahead and link up some more. And start making all these run. You see, now that there's hmm, now that there's more power, it's going a little quicker. see it's using the energy so the C all the cards basically are the same just with the different tiers as are as in industrial craft with the exception of the redstone flux the redstone flux is simply it holds redstone flux which is in mine factory so let's go ahead and put that on the back burner since we're not talking about redstone flux very much just a neat little cart so now the second to last group of carts well these kind of continue on to the last theme just a block and a cart so we, last time we talked about the anchors or maybe that was in the first episode these are basically an anchor in a mine cart they do the exact same thing you can see they the particles work as well because I still have the track man goggles on. So it's just an anchor in a cart. Then this is a mo is a crafting table in a cart. That's really it. So now that we have this anchor cart and this chest cart, let's go ahead and head back to our tunnel bore. I'm gonna actually use the admin anchor cart, so we'll go and put a bunch of this stuff back. And put some bedrock on there so they don't cheat. <laughs> Even though they're my staff. I just don't trust them. Alright. So our tunnel board has gotten quite far. So let's go ahead and get another night vision potion. Alright. So here's our tunnel board. Still spewing stuff on the ground. But if we connect these then it'll start spewing stuff into this chest cart. And we can even throw on a world anchor to keep it loaded. So you'll now see that this is gathering the stuff. What's also interesting about this which else what's bleh, what's also neat about these carts is they can put stuff in as well, including the fuel and I believe even a boar head so you can store extra boar heads 
Okay, no, not the boar heads. Can't be all automatic. And so now, you're yeah, ready to just leave this thing be. And we'll leave a nice trail of tracks behind so you can follow it on your locomotive. Now let's go ahead and get head back for the final minecarts. These ones are actually the really cool in regards to setting up a track. Now these four carts on the outside all look the same with a slight difference of texture in those little holes. But they couldn't be more different. So let's say you want to build a railway. Well, just get yourself a track layer cart. We'll go ahead, we'll go ahead and grab a mine cart, the chest cart as well. Now I notice when you open this, there's a pattern and a stock. So let's we'll go ahead and load this up with regular old rails. And it will, the pa it will actually take materials out of the chest cart. And when you thwack this, it, cr it creates its own track. Now you can't make this turn, so it can only do it straight. But it's a good way to build track through an, an area where it's kind of it might be tedious to build the track otherwise. Now this will build over slopes, which is really neat. All right. So now you've got your track laid down, but you want to make it a little prettier. So let's go ahead and grab some gravel and start setting this up. Now you'll notice there are two areas on here. There are there's under and sides. So what you're going to need to do is right here, you put in some whatever you want to replace. So for us, it's grass block and then what you want to replace it with, which is gravel. Then, just like the track layer cart, you throw in some stock. Now that was a little funky because there's a hole under there. So let's go ahead and make this carry on. Okay, bad, I didn't realize there was a cave under here, so let's go ahead and pretend that didn't happen. Putting the undercutter cart back. and we'll go ahead and reprogram it again so again what you want to replace what you want to replace it with and then the materials can just be thrown in here now as you see what it actually destroys is also put into the chest cart so it'll just replace the gravel I mean the grass underneath the track with gravel now the sides can also be changed which are these blocks right here so let's go ahead and put some stone there so again the pattern will destroy the grass blocks the sides will replace it with stone and we'll put that in here so now you can see that we're making a real cool railway now again you might not want to use gravel because of what happened over here just just a thought I didn't realize that there was a cave under there, but it's a good my handy dandy crowbar. No, uh, I accidentally destroyed my handy dandy crowbar. But hey, that reminds me of something else that I forgot. So let's go and make it handy dandy crowbar. Now, if you take a locomotive, so let's get the this guy over here and you name it let's name this one number one you see that it pops up the name so just a thing I quickly forgot but the losing my precious handy dandy crowbar reminded me alright so now you have a really cool track that you laid down that you modified but let's say you want to upgrade it so that's what the track relayer cart is for. This will relay your track. So, we'll go ahead and put these back up here. Let's say you want to replace this tired old steel rails with reinforced rails. Now again, we'll talk more about these reinforced rails in the track episode. So, again, it's just like the undercutter cart. What do you want to replace? What do you want to replace it with? And you could put this right in here. So as you can see, it's swapped out the rail. And now it's all upgraded. 
Sweet. All right, so now you've used your track, you've upgraded it, you've made it prettier, but now you're all done. So, time for the track remover card to come on in. You just, you can't open this, there's no GUI, and it simply removes the track. And it'll put it right into a linked chest cart. Now, of course, you don't have to have a chest cart linked. You can just do that. But it's good to have a cart linked. Bye bye, track relayer cart and track remover cart. Now, there is. Now, if you want to change this back, of course, you could use an undercutter cart and just swap it out, replacing the stone with gravel. Now, the only downside about the undercutter cart is let's say you wanted to replace the grass let's say you wanted to replace the grass with gravel but oh never mind you don't have to put a filter there my bad I did not realize that you could just not put something there so if you don't put anything there then it won't it'll just do whatever it will ignore whatever's underneath it so let's go ahead and of course, you can throw these behind a train to make it all automatic. So let's see, can you relay just whatever track to? No, so if you want to relay a track, you must have something to replace it with. So now we've beautified our little circle. And that concludes the train tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, we are on my server. There's a link in the description below on how to join. He's got this swaggy trackman goggles too. He knows. He knows. Ah, see, again, that's the downside with that. Well, I'll see you guys next time where we'll talk about tracks.